Column Chromatography. There are two parts in this demonstration video. The first part will demonstrate the preparation of the sample solution for column chromatography. The second part demonstrates how to prepare the column for column chromatography, and how to separate and purify a sample by column chromatography. First, prepare the sample solution. Add about 1 gram of fresh spinach leaves into a mortar. And then add some anhydrous magnesium sulfate. The purpose of adding anhydrous magnesium sulfate is to remove water from the spinach leaves. Grind the mixture with a pestle. Add about 2 ml of acetone into the mixture to dissolve the plant pigments into an organic solvent. Use a small glass funnel and a tiny piece of cotton to filter the extracted pigment solution into a small test tube. Place the sample solution into a warm water bath to evaporate the solvent. In a film hood, add an appropriate amount of silica gel into a conical flask carefully. Silica gel is a very fine powder. The powder can flow in air and may be inhaled. Hence, the whole process should be carried out in a film hood to avoid the inhalation of harmful silica gel. Preparation of the column Place a small plug of cotton wool at the bottom of the column. Hold the column firmly with an iron clamp. Add a thin layer of sea sand onto the top of the cotton wool plug. Place a conical flask under the column. Add an appropriate amount of the prepared eluent into the silica gel in a conical flask. Stir the mixture of silica gel and eluent to obtain a uniform slurry. Make sure that there is no air bubbles trapped inside the slurry. Transfer the prepared silica gel slurry into the column with the aid of a funnel. Open the stopcock to drain out the excess solvent. Add the remaining silica gel into the column. Until the amount of silica gel inside the column is about two thirds of the column height. Rinse the inner wall of the column with a small amount of solvent.
when there is only about 2 to 3 millimeters of the solvent remaining on the top of the silica gel. Close the stopcock. Do not let the surface of the silica gel dry out. Tap the column gently to make the silica gel pack tightly and evenly, and free of air bubbles. If there are air bubbles trapped inside the silica gel, the separation efficiency will be affected. Add a thin layer of sea sand onto the top of the silica gel. This is to prevent disturbing the uniform surface of the silica gel when adding solvent to the column. Rinse the inner surface of the column with a small amount of solvent. Drain the excess solvent out through the stopcock. Until there is about 2 to 3 mm of solvent remaining above the silica gel surface. Close the stopcock. The silica gel column is now prepared and is ready for loading the sample. Prepare the sample for column chromatography. Dissolve the sample with a small amount of eluent. The amount of eluent used should not be excess. If the sample is over diluted, the separation efficiency will be poor. Make sure that the sample is dissolved completely. Add the spinach pigment sample solution into the column with a dropper. Add the solution along the inner wall of the column carefully to prevent damaging the smooth silica gel surface. Rinse the test tube with a small amount of eluent. Add the solution into the column. Open the stopcock to drain out the solution from the column. And allow the sample solution to be absorbed into the silica gel. Now you can see two distinct colored bands appear in the column. At the lower position of the column, there is a yellow band moving faster along the column. And there is a green band moving slower. It remains at a higher position inside the column. When the sample solution is almost completely absorbed into the column, Slowly add the eluent to elute the bands down the column. The yellow band is carotin. Since carotin is a long polar substance, it moves faster along the silica gel column. The green band is chlorophyll. Since chlorophyll is more polar, it is attracted more strongly by the silica gel. So it moves slower. Add eluent continuously into the column. Never let the surface of the silica gel dry out. When the yellow band almost reaches the bottom of the column, use a clean conical flask to collect the yellow band. After collecting the yellow band, Keep it carefully.
Use another conical flask to collect the solution coming out from the column. As chlorophyll is a polar substance, the previously used eluent is not polar enough to elute it out from the column. After collecting the first fraction, change the eluent to a more polar one to elute out the green band. There are two green bands in the column. At the lower position is chlorophyll A. The one at the higher position is chlorophyll B, which is more polar than chlorophyll A. When the green band reaches the bottom of the column, collect the green band with a clean conical flask. The plant pigments obtained from spinach leaves are separated into two fractions. The first fraction is carotin, and the second fraction is chlorophyll. The green fraction collected is chlorophyll A. To collect the more polar chlorophyll B from the column, a more polar eluent is needed to elute it out. We can use TLC to check the identity and the purity of the fractions. Spot the two collected fractions at different positions on a TLC plate. Develop the TLC plate with an appropriate eluent. The composition and purity of the fractions are determined. In the TLC analysis, the two color bands appear as single spots, indicating that both fractions are pure compounds without any impurities. <laughs>